G'day guys. So we've just got back from the dealership from picking the Raptor up. We've been down the back. We've been out the back. We've cleaned the car off. Next step is to get it up on the hoist, get it stripped apart so we can see what we're working with. All right, so first step is to pull the exhaust off. We're gonna to aim to offer a completely modular system, so that way you can pick and choose what you do and don't want. So I'm gonna get Zach, the marketing guy, under the car so he can be completely across what we're developing. And I've also got my granddad, Ray, here today. Uh, he's been a motor mechanic for most of his life, so he's gonna help me swing some spanners and get this thing apart. <laughs> Let's do it. So I just gotta pull that gearbox cross member out. When do you want me and Dad? I don't know yet. Yeah, no, you're all right. Maybe I should be making you work and I can stand around. Yes, yeah, take all the bulbs out. No, I'll get you to give me a hand to lever this down. Yeah, yeah. If that's all right. So, I've got to pull. Easy roll. I want to drop the gearbox cross member down. Thank you. I tried pulling this intermediate section of exhaust out. Yeah. And I can't get it out with this in. So the plan is gearbox cross member out. Then I can drop this intermediate section and we can drop the rear section. It's all one, it's all one pipe, is there? No, it's just that you can't, so I can't bring the exhaust forward yeah. without pulling the dump pipes off. So it was either dump pipes off or gearbox cross member out. So I figured this would be easier. Yeah. And then, so once this is out, these come off. The reason why we're pulling these out is because, as you can see here, but more specifically here, is that Ford haven't used the traditional two bolt style flanges. So to be able to offer a modular system, what we need to be able to do is completely replicate these. So uh, one of our boys, he's studying engineering, just bought himself a 3D scanner. We're gonna get Kev to scan and draw these up for us. So that way they're replicated to exact factory specifications. So yeah, this piece off, replicate that flange. There is another flange through here as well that we've discovered. So you can see here that it's got, again, it's another one of these donut style it's, it's, it's like a hybrid, right? It's donut but two bolt as well. Yeah. So what I want to do is get Kev to replicate this. Mm -hmm. So that way, if you buy this section of the exhaust, it'll made up to here. If you buy this section of the exhaust, it'll made up to here. So basically, we're just going to completely replicate everything that the factory has. So that way, whether you buy one piece, two pieces, or all of it, everything will work as factory. Can I give you that one, please? So if you want to leave a... I think we're going to have to go... It's through here somewhere. Yeah. I don't know whether we pop the front down first and then there, or we'll just see yeah, how right. it goes. There you go. Yeah, good. Your side? Not bad. Gone tight somewhere now. Yep. Got it? Yep. You got it. Thank you. So I'll drop this mount out next. I think it might be the easiest way to get this piece out. Yeah. What's your benefit of pulling this off? What are you going to gain? What, why, what's your idea? Because these aren't equal length. Yeah, yeah. And I gotta wonder if that's why it contributes to them sounding like they do. Because right. these sound so much like a V6 Commodore, I wanna try and improve how they sound, and I do have a couple of ideas on how to do that. Right. And I think that starting with making from turbo to muffler the same length will help make them sound better. It'll equalize the noise. Yeah, like the old V8 yeah. stuff, you know, like if you didn't have a H-pipe or an yeah, S-pipe yeah. in it, it'd Yeah, if you get them just shit. equal lengths and beyond better, you, it might even improve fuel economy or something like that too. True. I didn't think about that. Hey, good. Good. You can get rid of some of these bends that you've got here and, you know, bring yeah. it around. But I think one thing we've found from, like, a lot of the stuff I see online and 
feedback from customers and stuff is that they they don't love how they sound. Yeah, so I think yeah, that's going to be yeah. our main focus with all the things that we develop is just making well, them sound better. Well, the Australian get pipes the better they sound. When we were young fellas, we used to put a straight through pipe and the exhaust pipe through. Then we had the pipe. Yeah, and they used to sound good the there. Right? <laughs> so to revisit what we were speaking about before, that's one flange that we've got to replicate, which is not like anything we've seen before. That's the other one, so we'll make that up as well. And then obviously we've got this slip joint here. So just in this section, there is a fair, a fair chunk of work to do in copying all the factory flanges. So shoot this upstairs to Kev and get him drawing. I'm gonna to have to come down when you put this back together so it's done right. You will. Because I have no idea what I'm doing here. <laughs> so I guess the next part of the exhaust that we should probably pull off and shoot upstairs to Kev is the muffler section. Now I've got a few theories about what happens inside the muffler. I really want to cut it apart and see if that's true or false. We've also got the bimodal valves that we need to replicate as well. One thing we found is that a lot of the phone calls that we get about our muffler conversion, the four inch tips that we do, the resonator delete, is does that impact any of the modes on the dash? So it doesn't because of the location of the valve. So you'll see here that they're right behind the muffler and the section that we usually modify is right at the back of the vehicle. So one thing that we think is going to be imperative to this operating as per OE is that we pull these right apart, get Kev to scan and figure out exactly how they work so that way we can integrate them into the new system as well. So let's get this section off. So this is all the bimodal valves. So there's a couple of different, there's a button on the dash that gives you different Oh right, noise. okay, yeah. So I think what happens is in these obviously open and close and stuff, so when it's in Baja mode, which is its loud, sporty oh, right. mode, yeah, these yeah. are obviously fully open. Right. And then I think it's got another mode, which is quiet mode, which would fully shut these. So then that way, when these are fully shut, and the reason why I think the muffler is baffled, is when these are fully shut, the exhaust comes in, and then it comes out just this one and goes back into the middle here. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, and you yeah. can see that because there's a heap of heat okay. marks here. Yeah. So, we got to make sure whatever we do with the new stuff is that we put this shit back in because so many people on. want that yep. stuff yep. to work. Yep. So I'll probably start by unplugging them first, that way we're not going to damage the valves or, or any of the wiring. And then that way we can work on dropping it here. So the, the other part of the exhaust that we already offer is this rear section. So we know how to get this part off, that's nice and easy. Drop a couple of hangers and then we'll pull this all out and probably start cutting it up I reckon. It's crazy that they've used such a different mix of hangers and arrangements. Yeah, never ever, eh? But nothing is the same from the front to the back. Another one at the front of you too. Probably so people like us can't modify them with all this bit out. You might have to just you know, get a bit of a way hold it there. Can you give those pipes a bit of a hit up there on the bend with your soft hammer? Up on the top there if you get up in there, yeah. I don't know if you can or not. That worked really bloody well. Hey? <laughs> that worked so good. Did it come out, didn't it? Yeah. You got that in? Yep. You gonna chuck it down sideways? Yep. You're not gonna cut that up in pieces, are you? Yeah, I'm gonna man. Stupid, <laughs> eh? Don't worry, they're expensive and hard to get. I hope that's not on boys there. <laughs> <laughs>
it's probably worth just doing the same thing. Yep. And yeah, get them done, get them yep. 3D printed and tested. And yeah, cool. So yeah, we'll 3D print some prototypes so that way we know that they're going to work before we send them to the machinist to get them produced. Yep. So if I can leave you with that, I'm going to go keep pulling them apart. Yep. Easy as. Cool. Thank you, mate. All right guys, so now that we've got the exhaust off, we're gonna jump in the engine bay and start pulling some stuff apart in there. Here we are in the engine bay of the Raptor. We're gonna go through a couple of things that we've got in mind to kick things off with the R&D. And I reckon that should obviously start with this top pipe, right? So, as you guys would have seen, we do the stock inlet location airbox. So the stock inlet location airbox meets up to these two factory pipes. So it makes perfect logical sense that the next product that we develop goes from here to there. And by from here to there, I mean from the airbox down to the turbo. Mm. What I think we'll be looking to do is increase size, which will increase flow, but also retain all of the factory lines, clips, mounting hardware. So it's essentially an OE fit and finish product, but with more flow and more volume. Whilst looking a bit better. <laughs> Let's take it off, get it upstairs to Kev. Yeah, awesome, all right. Right. So what we're well, gonna... you want me to tell you what to do? Mate, that might be a shorter episode, <laughs> this, yeah. This doesn't have a carby on it, you'll be up <laughs> straight here. Right, right, right. <laughs> we're gonna pull this pipe off. Yeah, yeah. So I might start stuffing around over here if I can get you to take this hose clamp off yeah. and that bolt and then we'll figure out how to get these clips and stuff off. So I'll grab you some tools. You want me to crack them for you? <laughs> Crack me if I keep my shit up, eh? <laughs> Alright, that one for there. That one for there. The crossover pipe from the airbox to the passenger side turbo has a heap of different fittings and stuff in it. So we've got to make sure that we put all of that stuff back in it so it works like it should from the factory. So we're going to start by pulling all the clips and stuff off and then that way once we get everything else undone it'll make pulling this top pipe out really easy. Here you go. Yeah, you're right. We'll try and undo all these clips without breaking them. So you'll see this line here that I'm disconnecting uh, and that's from the blow-off valve. So I know that TurboSmart do make a replacement for these as well, which I think we should probably get. Yeah, I'll get yeah. on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> do you want my card numbers? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's off, that's yeah, off. Two off, there another one. Oh, that's all you got yeah, it's off, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna break so many things on this car. <laughs> We're gonna have to order a few more clips. <laughs> The other thing I think I want to do is take this off. Okay. Because there is a fitting in that as well that we will need to draw. Okay. So exactly why do you want to pull this off? And what is it? It's, uh, so there's a, I pulled this out of it, which is like a, it looks like a PCB return yeah. breather arrangement. I'm going to take this top pipe off just so we yeah. get to it. I think it's pointless just doing a pipe from there to there yeah. because it's still going to bottleneck down there. Yep. So if we're going to go from airbox to turbo, I think we go airbox to turbo, like a complete replacement pipe. Yeah, nice. What are they, what, what's your economy like on fuel though? Absolutely terrible. Are they? Yeah, no, no. When Nathan's driving, it's absolutely garbage. <laughs> We've had a fair few customers whinge about how bad they are. Okay. Well, when I say whinge, comment on how bad they are. So like 17, 18 litres to the 100. But is that thrashing it? No. Oh. No, and I think that's why a lot of them are getting them tuned to try and get better fuel economy. So you have to use less throttle percentage. So that pipe that you're holding yeah. is from airbox to passenger side turbo. And it's two piece. 
and this is the other half of it here. Yeah, okay. So, obviously in the car, it looks like that. Yep, sweet. So we've got passenger side turbo, airbox in. Mm. Um, what we're gonna have to do is remake all of these fittings so that everything operates as factory, as OEM as possible. So in this side, we've got the PCV return. So there's a line that comes from the rocker cover yep. back down to here, which is all pollution stuff. So you can see that that's got like a retaining clip. So that's all gonna have to be millimeter perfect. Um, we've got the blow off valve return, which is another clip on thing. So there's a rubber hose that goes on there and then the clip. So we'll make that piece. And so you then, want to retain the factory items here? 100%, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because at least then that way, if anyone else brings out anything that's aftermarket, you know it's going to it's going to work. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the only other thing we've got to draw is these two. What they do, I'm honestly not sure. I want to do some research on that and figure it out. Yeah. And I think as far as research goes, obviously jump online, see what I can find out what they do. But I also think, and this is going to sound crazy, that we cut this up and see what's going on inside. Yeah, right, right, right. Being that this is turbo to airbox, airbox to turbo, I would imagine it might be flow directional. Yeah. And I gotta wonder if we just go banging things in with no forethought of what's going on in the inside. Changing flow and temperatures. And yeah, 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 right. So Fair I enough. think once Kev's drawn them, we'll get this pipe cut open just to make sure that there's gonna be nothing wrong. Maybe before we do that, we should call Motorama and see if we can get one. <laughs> yeah, I'm not driving this home. <laughs> right. So, all right, let's go see Kev. Need some more stuff drawn, mate, please. Yeah, sweet. So, crossover pipe off the Raptor. Yep. Airbox and turbo in. Uh -huh. um, I think we need to replicate this one. Yeah. That pops off. So that one. Weld in piece there. Yep. Yep. And then once you can figure out how to get that off, because I fucking can't. Give us a look. <laughs> I struggled in the engine bay no for so long with that. Yeah, they suck. Uh, and to replicate those two. Yes, yeah, And then I think the only other thing that we've got to do. Uh, once you've finished drawing them is I just uh -huh. want to cut the back of this out to see just to make sure that there's no baffling or anything going on yeah, in there. Sweet. So yeah, it should be pretty easy. Yeah. Scan them? Probably not. Like they're no. pretty, pretty straightforward easy. objects. Yeah. With just kind of two features to them, two bits of tube with a bit of an extension and yep. something to weld onto, like fairly easy. So yep. yeah, I doubt I'll scan any of these. Yeah. We're going to 3D print them again as well? 100%, yeah. Yeah. Always do. Cool. All right. I'm going to go keep ruining this car. Sweet. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, mate.